Hey everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about the brand new Toolkit RC M8D Touch Charger. Let me begin by showing you the box it comes in. The first thing you'll note is that it has a very large screen, but before we get into that, let me tell you why this charger is so new and so great. First off, it can handle 1S to 8S batteries that are LiPos, Lithium High Voltage, Lithium FE, Lithium Ion, and LTO. It can also handle nickel metal hydride batteries that are 1S all the way up to 20S. And finally, it can handle PB batteries that are 1S all the way up to 15S. Next, this unit can handle two batteries at once at 800 watts per channel or 1600 watts total. And the output current is all the way up to 30 amps. The MAD also handles an input voltage of 10 volts all the way up to 49 volts. For each battery type, you have the option to balance charge, discharge, store, and destroy the battery. There is even a fast charging 65 watt USB-C output. The MAD has a folding display, a touch display, and it even has voice. And finally, the best selling feature would be the price. It's very affordable, around $139 US. Now let's quickly go over the features located on the front of the unit. On the front left, you'll find the voltage port A, the balance port A, the LED status light A. Then on the right hand side, you'll find the battery voltage port B, the balance port B, and the LED status light B. And in the center, you'll find the temperature sensor port. Moving to the back of the unit, you'll find the XT90 voltage input port followed by the micro SD card, which contains all the voices and your stored data. Next is the USB-C 65 watt output port. And finally, the two cooling fans located on either side. Moving to the top of the unit, you have the foldable IPS color display screen. This touch screen can be adjusted between zero and 90 degrees. Two buttons are located on top. You have a scroll wheel enter button and an exit back button. Items included with the MAD would be the owner's manual, a USB-C cable, and an XD90 female plug. The XD90 plug is used to power the unit, but be aware it's up to you to provide the power supply to the XT90 plug. This means that if you want to power this unit from the wall plug in your house, you're going to need a transformer that converts AC power to DC power like this one I have here. You can see that on one end I have a wall plug and on the other end I have an XT90 plug. If you don't own any type of AC to DC power supply, well, then you can just use a battery. And that's what I'm going to use for this demo. So I'm about to plug in the battery and I just want you to hear what happens when I plug it in. Welcome to Toolkit RC. So you heard two things. One is the voice. You can customize that voice to anything you want. And the second would be the fan. It always tests the fan when it first turns on. The first screen that appears is the power input screen. You can set up three different types of power inputs on this screen and customize them as you wish. I've set up the first one to be powered by a battery, so that's the one I'm gonna select. This is the main screen. Let me explain what you see. At the top left, it shows I'm using power input one, and then it shows the voltage of the battery that's plugged into the rear of this unit. And on the top right, it tells me the temperature of the unit and it shows me that the fan is not working, but it does show me that I do have a micro SD card plugged in. Now, all of the remaining information on the screen is only relevant when you plug in batteries into the front of the unit. So for this demo, I'm going to plug a 4S 850 milliamp hour LiPo battery into port A. And I'm going to plug a 6S 1300 milliamp hour LiPo battery into port B. When I plug each battery in, you'll hear a voice confirming the battery's been plugged in and the LED status light will change color. Battery connected. Battery connected. If you tap on the word info, you will see each of the cell voltages for the batteries you plugged in. Both batteries are currently in standby mode, so you have to click on the word standby to take action. Now you can set up information for a particular battery and save it. For this demo, I have not saved any battery data previously, so I'm just gonna modify it as I go. So I'm gonna select battery data number one, then I'll select modify. On this screen, you have the option of selecting the battery type. You'll note that the list of battery types is quite extensive. I'll leave it on LiPo. Next, you must select the action you wish to take. 
You can balance charge, you can discharge, you can store the battery, and you can destroy the battery. I'm going to balance charge the battery. Next, you want to select the voltage of each of the cells. Normally it's 4.2, so I'll leave it at that. You can then let the charger auto detect how many cells are in the battery, or you can select them yourself, anywhere from one cell all the way up to eight cells. I'll leave it on auto. Finally, you must select how much current you want to put into the battery. It's hard to get precise using the on-screen slider, so I use the scroll wheel, and you can get pretty precise. In this case, since our battery is an 854 cell, I only want to put in one amp of current. Next, I hit the confirm button, and it shows me everything I've selected. If everything looks correct, I hit the start button, and the battery begins to charge. What you then see on the screen is the number of amps going into the battery. In other words, I put one amp in, so it shows one amp. Then you have the progress bar. As this bar moves from left to right, the battery will be fully charged. Below that is how many milliamp hours have currently been placed into the battery. And to the right of that is the current voltage of the battery. And then on the lower left is the current number of watts. And over to the right would be how much time has elapsed. If I then click on the info button, I can then see the voltage of the four cells increasing. And if I slide the screen to the left, I can then see the resistance of the four cells. And if I slide it one more time, I'll see the status of the charger. While battery A is charging, let's go to battery B. Again, I'll select battery data one and then modify. Since this battery is fully charged, I'm gonna select discharge. I'll leave the settings as they are and select confirm. And then I'll select start and okay. The cells in the battery then begin to discharge. Taking a look at the current, you can see we are in the negative because we're pulling voltage out of the battery. And when I click on the info option, you can see that all six cells are losing voltage. It's at this point when you do a discharge or storage that the fan on the unit will come on. It's not very loud. I'll stop talking. You can hear it here. Once you stop the discharge, the fan turns off. Now I'll quickly show you what the option of destroy a battery looks like. Basically when you destroy a battery, you remove all the voltage, thus rendering the battery inert, and you can discard it. To access the settings, click on the gear in the center of the screen. The first setting would be the power input setting, you can modify this as you wish. Next you have the security settings, which should actually be called safety settings. Following this are the charge settings. You have synchronous mode if you want to use both channels at once, continuous work if you want to plug one battery in after another, never stopping. Trickle charge just means when the battery is full, if you leave it on the charger, it will continue to keep the battery full. Battery selection means that the charger will try to figure out what battery type you've plugged in. Next, you have your system settings for the backlight and the voice. Surprisingly, this charger has plenty of available voices. And finally, there's just a few more setting options, and we're done. This is what it sounds like when a battery is fully charged. Fast charge completed. Next, I'll quickly demonstrate the USB fast charge. For this demo, I have my Mini 4 Pro batteries, and I'm going to charge them up as fast as possible by plugging in USB-C into the back of the unit. Pay attention to the green lights on the DJI charging unit, and you will notice that they move really quickly, which tells you that they are receiving the maximum wattage. Now, the only place you're going to find the output progress of the USB-C fast charge is at the very top of the screen on the right. This is the only indication that you are USB fast charging. This brings me to the end of the video. If you have questions on the MAD, post them below and I'll get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to buy the MAD, the links to where you can buy it are directly below this video. For now, I say thanks for watching and stay tuned for more cool product reviews. I'll catch you in a future video. Bye!